Huawei's sub-branded company Honor have just released their final flagship device of 2018 in China and first of 2019 globally, possibly setting a new standard for budget smartphones of the new year. This phone doesn't cut corners in any real way and manages to keep the costs as low as $430 and $510 for the 6 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM variant respectively. Regardless of which you pick up, you are treated to 128 gigs of storage, but unfortunately no expandable storage. Though nothing has been said as to whether it will accept a Huawei Nano SD card or not. The main talking point of this phone is its innovative and bold design language. There is a hole punched notch housing the selfie cam in the front which seems a lot more practical than other notches out there giving you the most immersive experience yet without the need of a slider or pop up mechanism. There is also an earpiece grill at the top which doubles up as a second speaker and houses the notification LED light. Continuing this innovative trend setting is the glass back. Honor have managed to embed light reflective V symbols in the back giving it its signature for its V series phones and it looks incredible to say the least. At the back we are also treated to a crazy 48 megapixel shooter paired with a time of flight 3D camera but more on that later. The cameras are set in a horizontal setup much like older dual lens smartphones with the flash to the right hand side. We also have a cutout for the fingerprint sensor as well as on a logo which is a bit too big and bold for my liking. Nevertheless, the back is still clean and beautiful. Taking a look at the side bezels of the phone, we have a dual SIM tray on the left, the light sensor, IR blaster and headphone jack at the top. Yes, they have included a headphone jack. On the right, you find a volume rocker and textured power button and at the bottom a single firing speaker and USB 3.1 Type-C port. The display is 6.4 inches in size and uses IPS technology instead of AMOLED. In a world of OLED panels, this seems like a bit of a step back, but this was done in order to punch a hole in the screen for the front facing cam, which is actually a step in the right direction. The reason this could not house an OLED panel is because this LCD screen is made up of 18 layers, and the bottom two layers have been drilled through for the camera. OLED panels typically have fewer layers of screen and drilling into an AMOLED panel is not only tricky but pricey to say the least. That being said, this is one of the most striking IPS displays I have ever seen in a smartphone thanks to the sheer amount of screen layers. It may not be an AMOLED display but it's as close to one as it gets and the colors are displayed more accurately too. Taking a look at it next to my OnePlus 6T's AMOLED display, it's hard to see much of a difference even when outdoors with loads of sunlight. The display is HDR10 compliant too. In order to see what this wonderful screen has to offer, you'll need to unlock the phone first, and this is done in the fastest manner I have ever seen. The fingerprint scanner is a physical one and placed on the phone's back. It is perfectly round and feels solid. It is placed perfectly and is beyond beyond fast. Probably the fastest physical sensor I have come across. It would have been cool to have a sensor embedded into the display, but this is costly and isn't half as fast. Face unlock takes things to another level. It takes a second to set up and less than that to unlock the device. Seriously, this is the fastest face unlock I have come across. It even outshines OnePlus who are known for snappy face unlock speeds. It can even be triggered when you raise to wake the device for even more convenience. When you are in the device, you are previewed with Honor's Magic 2.0 skin over Android 9 Pi. This is the exact same skin as Huawei's EMUI 9 with a different name. It is no stock Android but is very clean and EMUI have come a long way in order to give one of the best software experiences to date. There are a couple pointless features found in the settings but some useful ones too, such as one-handed mode which shrinks the screen's display area, digital balance which tracks the phone's usage, and high touch which allows you to translate the entire contents of the screen. There is also an app draw option should that tickle your fancy, but the ugly icon has me switching back and this is the only style there is unless you download a third party launcher, but even then you are out of luck since Huawei blocks the use of one, well for the Chinese model anyways. Though I am welcomed by the new hole punch notch style, there is an option in settings to hide it should you prefer a more standard look. All features found on other recent Huawei and Honor phones are the same and while not all useful, they are there should you need them. Flicking around Magic 2.0 can be done using full screen gestures, which is the same as previous Huawei offerings. 
You swipe in from the left or the right of the screen to go back, swipe up from the center to go home, and swipe up and hold to open recent apps. This isn't as great as what OnePlus offers, but is more than on par with other smartphone gestures. Should you be a bit more old school, there is still three key navigation, which can be tuned to your liking. Where this device really excels is when it comes to performance. You get a 7 nanometer Kirin 980 chipset, which is currently the fastest Android chipset on the market until the new Snapdragon releases early this year. The phone comes paired with a dedicated performance mode, which utilizes the CPU and GPU for the fastest possible experience. The great thing about this feature is that it can be enabled permanently. The downside of enabling the performance mode is that it chomps away at battery life and if the mode is not enabled the benchmark scores I got were closer to the Snapdragon 845 chip which is slightly disappointing considering this is Huawei's next generation chip and will only be replaced at the end of 2019. But even when this mode is on the phone does not reach high temperatures thanks to the included liquid cooling pipe which Honor refers to as the 9 due to its 9 heat dissipation layers. This is the same cooling pipe found within the Honor Note 10 and in a much smaller build. Not only have they improved the heat management by running the pipe from the camera to the chipset to the battery charging unit, but they have also allowed AI to take control of the pipe by predicting where the heat will be generated from next in order to start the cooling process before heat build up, giving the phone the best possible performance and temperature. Flicking through social media apps and multitasking is fluid and snappy and when playing games there is no sign of lag. The quality and performance while gaming is impeccable whether performance mode is enabled or not. All games allow for the screen to end before or after the selfie lens so if you like the full view experience like I do then you will be happy to hear that all apps and games comply with it. If the crazy amounts of RAM and CPU performance of this device is overdoing it for simple smartphone tasks and gaming needs, you will be happy to know that you can connect the phone to an external display using an HDMI to Type-C cable or simply just using wireless casting which transforms your phone into a desktop-like experience on the external display while using your phone as a trackpad or independently so that you can use your phone similarly to Samsung DeX and while doing so still use your phone for its usual tasks. When it comes to connectivity, Honor have included NFC for pairing and cardless payments, Bluetooth 5.0, dual frequency GPS which uses AI to select the best satellites for the strongest signal, and they have added a third Wi-Fi antenna in order to maintain a strong signal when using the phone in landscape mode. When it comes to speaker quality, they get as loud as you would expect from a phone at this price. They have good depth and no distortion at loud volumes, but then again they don't really get that loud. I say that because the earpiece doubles up as a second speaker giving off a dual stereo sound. However, the earpiece speaker is extremely soft and is only there for a more immersive experience when playing a game or watching a movie. Unfortunately, there is no Dolby Atmos built in, but LDAC is available when using headphones. The camera UI is neatly stacked up with tons of features that you would usually find on any phone running EMUI which includes any feature you could possibly think of. The back cameras are set in a horizontal array which includes a 48 megapixel main sensor, yes 48, with an aperture of f1.8 and the second sensor is an 8 megapixel TOF time of flight 3D stereo camera much like the one found on the Oppo R17 which measures distance in the form of light signal between the lens and the subject in order to get the best possible depth effect. Note there is no form of stabilization here other than AI which works brilliantly nowadays anyway. When taking snaps in good lighting conditions photos come out incredibly clear and full of detail. You could even go as far as to say they come out on par with the likes of the Pixel 3 and Mate 20 Pro. 
The level of detail is in full force with Sony's IMX586 sensor and it does a great job at handling a lot of light too. Though there is no form of stabilization, there is what Honor call AI 4D predictive focus, which shows points of moving objects on the screen and prevents blur when taking a snap which I found to work surprisingly well. I couldn't take a blurry photo. There is no optical lossless zoom here, but the electronic zoom does a superb job due to its assistance from AI. Like Google have stated, it's becoming all about the software now. When you whip your phone out at night or in low light situations, you are treated to Huawei's night mode, which takes 4 seconds to use and has its benefits for sure. It doesn't necessarily make things brighter than normal camera mode, but it retains all the detail that would have otherwise been lost. And trust me, this is a big deal, since the difference is huge. Without night mode on, things are just as bright, but with less detail and more noise. That being said, even without the mode enabled, photos come out extremely bright. So I went ahead and video recorded the scenes I shot to give you an indication of how dark it actually was, since the photos came out looking as if I was taking these photos before sunset. Portrait mode works better than I have ever experienced thanks to the 3D sensor. It uses a mix of hardware and software to get the best possible depth effect and the results are impressive. The subject is perfectly clear and the blur is done in such a smooth and surreal way. On the video front, you are welcome to 4K but it is limited to 30fps just like on other Huawei flagships, as well as 1080p at 60 frames per second. 4K comes out clear and full of detail but lacks stabilization due to its 30fps cap. 1080p comes out with brilliant quality and stabilization even though only AI is taking care of the latter. Rest assured, you can get some great video recordings on the View 20 and the AI does a superb job of stabilization. Another incredible thing you can do with the phone's video is video background blur. It is limited to 1080p but it comes out incredibly well, giving it a movie kind of feel. This is where the TOF lens truly shines. Slow motion is also included and now includes 960 FPS, a first for Honor smartphones. It is damn slow, but just doesn't live up to the same standard as what I've seen on the Mate 20 Pro or Galaxy Note 9. It is not bad by any means and is nice to have, but it is extremely hard to use and the quality is not very good due to it being limited to 720p. Switching over to the front camera, you are presented to a single lens embedded in the screen itself through a punch hole design and it sports 25 megapixels with an aperture of f2.0. Taking a normal snap in decent lighting conditions makes for some pleasing results in the form of subject and background detail. The pictures come out clear and don't feel washed out like many other budget phone selfie cams. Though the depth effect found within portrait mode is purely software based, it comes out looking just as good as phones with a secondary depth sensor in the front, if not better. The background is blurred superbly and the subject does not take a hit in detail at all. Recording video using the front camera is limited to 1080p at 30fps, which is pretty standard and things come out clear and stable thanks to AI 4D tracking. The battery comes in at a surprising 4000 mAh, the same as the regular Mate 20, so expect similar screen on times of around 7-8 to eight hours. During my time with the phone, I started my day with 100% and never went to bed with less than around 50% battery life. I will do a full battery drain test on this device so be sure to stay tuned for that. The View 20 does not support wireless charging but the phone comes with a 22.5 watt Huawei supercharger and can charge your phone from 0 to 55% in just 30 minutes. Considering this is the same charger paired with the regular Mate 20, you can expect similar charge times between an hour and 30 minutes and an hour and 45 minutes. Again, I will be putting this phone through a charging speed test in the weeks to come, so hit that notification bell if you have yet to do so. The Honor View 20 does not come with an IP certification, but it should be splash proof considering its solid build. It does not offer micro SD card support, but who's to say you can't use a Huawei Nano SD? It does not house an AMOLED screen, but its IPS display is one of the best I have seen and even trades blows with most OLED panels. But that's about it. 
For around 500 bucks, you can get your hands on a phone which has an all-view punch hole display housing a brilliant 25 megapixel selfie cam, a stunning back design with a cutout for an impressive 48 megapixel snapper and TOF 3D lens which takes some of the best pictures I have ever seen, along with a smashingly fast fingerprint reader and face unlock which offers better speeds than anything else out there. You get a 4000 mAh battery paired with Huawei Supercharge, a damn headphone jack, dual speakers, an IR blaster, and the latest 7 nanometer Kirin 980 chipset. There is a lot to like here, and if you are due for an upgrade at this price range, then there is currently no better phone out there. Sorry OnePlus.